Hey guys, it's Ian here with Hobbies and Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another comic book, uh, you know, collection review. Today we're going to be looking at the Creature Commandos, uh, and well, it's kind of hard to tell you who wrote this because of the way this was originally published. So uh, DC used to have this thing called Weird War, War Tales, where they just had a bunch of war stories and they had some sort of weird element to them, right? Kind of like uh, like Weird Tales. Uh, like the, fa the the fantasy pulp uh, uh, magazine, right? And <clears throat> and so this anthology uh, had a bunch of different creators working on it, right? Broadly speaking, you can say that J D J M D Mateus is probably the one that most uh, contributed to the Creature Commandos, uh, but some other writers include Robert Kenninger and Mike Barr, uh, who I'm a pretty big fan of. I really like the his uh, Camelot 3000 series, so I'm, if I'm remembering this uh, creator correctly, right? Uh, and then there was a bunch of artists, right? Because every uh, issue was done by a different artist, right? So there's uh, Fred Carrillo, Pat Broderick, John Salardo, Bob Hall, Jerry Ordway, Don Spiegel. And then in terms of letters, there was uh, John Constanza, Ben Oda, Esfid Bahilum, uh, Milt Snappen, Shelley Lefferman. And in terms of colorist, there was two. There was uh, Adrienne Ro Roy, uh, Jerry Serpy, and then the cover art was by Joe Kubert with help by John Callis, right? And the uh, Creature Commandos was created by J.M. DeMatteis and Pat, uh, Pat Broderick. And, and this collection uh, is the original run of the Creature Commandos. It has about 20 issues in it, uh, or 20 stories in it. Uh, not all of them are full issues. Um, and it's pretty fun. I, I bought this last year, uh, or maybe two years ago at this point. And I hadn't gotten around to reading it. I thought it'd be fun to read during Halloween or during uh, the spooky season. And I was right. I think it's really fun. Uh, this is published by DZ, uh, DC. And if you're kind of caught up with uh, DC news lately, you know that there is going to be a Creature Commandos TV show later uh, in December. This has more or less nothing to do with it. Like the, the group of characters that are in this story are not the same ones that are going to be in that show. But the concept originates here, right? And so if you want to know more about them, uh, it's probably best that you read some of this. Uh, specifically, you probably want to read the issues that have the GI robot in it, in them because um, it probably is the most related you're going to get to, to what's in the TV show, right? Based on the trailers. Um, and the demographic for this book, uh, for this collection of Creature Commandos, is probably YA. Uh, there's nothing too, like, fucked up. I mean, it's a war story uh, serial, so... Uh, there are going to be like things about war, right? Specifically about World War II, um, but it's not particularly like bad or, 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 or you know, you know, too harsh. It's, it's pretty minimal. The genres here are war stories, superhero, sci-fi, and fantasy, and that's just the uh, the smorgasbord of all of the stuff that is included here. A lot of it is just more generally pulp style, uh, pulp style stuff, right? Um, if you uh, have read a comic book, you'll probably understand what 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 genre this is, right? Um, and in terms of adaptations, like I said, this specific group doesn't have an adaptation, but there will be an adaptation of the idea, right? Which is uh, the Creature Commando show uh, coming out in December. And the rating for this book is a 4.5 out of 5. I think it's nearly perfect, uh, but there are some slight issues with it. And the thing is that some of the writing is, is a bit too ridiculous for me um, in the sense that it, it just tries too hard to, to really like get to the themes uh, of what it's trying to get to. And uh, there's some issues with um, with consistency across story to story, right? And I think that that makes uh, no sense. There should be none of these issues, right? I mean, how hard is it to keep track of something that you're doing once a month? It, it should not be that difficult, right? Uh, you have the previous issue, you have time to read it. You should understand exactly what's going on week to week, right? Or month to month or issue to issue, whatever division of time you want to give it. Uh, and these inconsistencies are not uh, acceptable, right? So the premise here is basically the Universal Monsters, which uh, if, you, if you don't know who that is, that's basically all of the monsters from classic monster movies, right? So it's uh, Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein. It's um, uh, Dracula, werewolves, or the Wolfman, uh, and uh, the Mummy, right? We don't have a Mummy in this, but we have all of the other ones. And we also have a Medusa, right? So the Universal Monsters, Medusa, an army guy, and a C-3PO looking ass motherfucker. Uh, that's a robot. He's an army robot. All 
uh, basically just go fight Nazis. And they are a special black ops group called the Creature Commandos. And that's basically the, the idea here. And um, the story structure is introduce us to the four main characters uh, and then take us on a bunch of different missions, add a new character here and there when necessary um, and go through the rest of it. And then eventually at the end of it, um, the characters are jettisoned into space in order to uh, get them out of the way, right? And in the 2000s, I think there was a new series, but that series is kind of like not in continuity. And so the creature commandos exist in the, uh, you know, the 20th century. They disappear at the beginning of the 21st century. They have something going on, but it's not really true. So the next time that, you know, the creature commandos actually exist as a group of characters is probably uh, New 52 when they had uh, Agent of Shade. I think that was, it was a Frankenstein book. Um, and um, that's basically all you really need to know about them. So let's get into the, um, the plot line here. Uh, we get introduced to the Creature Commandos. We learn about Project M. We learn that there was a man that got uh, <laughs> exploded uh, and he got stitched back together. And uh, his name is something Taylor. His last name is Taylor. And everyone just calls him Lucky because uh, he's alive even though he got blown up by a grenade, right? Um, then there's another guy who was a soldier he did something bad and he was going to be sentenced to 30 years in prison. However, they asked him, do you, instead of going to prison, want to volunteer for this project that we're doing? And so he accepted the volunteering and he ended up being uh, turned into a living vampire. Kind of like Morbius, but more like Dracula. He's just Dracula, but uh, there were some extra steps getting to there. Uh, and then there's this other person who is a young uh, farm boy who joined the military. He like had some sort of issue where he um, had some sort of psychotic break. He had lycanthropy. Uh, and then the Project M people did some stuff to him to make him like actually become a werewolf. So um, you have the Wolfman, you have Dracula, and you have Frankenstein. Although they're not actually those characters, right? And we have this uh, generic, uh, you know, hard as nail soldier called Lieutenant Treve. And uh, he's in charge of them. He's the, the commanding officer of this team. And they all just go on different missions across uh, the different theaters of war in World War II, trying to fight Nazis. And a lot of it is pretty fun. Uh, you know, J.M. DeMatteis is a bit too uh, willing to, to... I don't know, it's weird because on one hand, he like paints the Nazis as like, you know, demons, devils, monsters. And sometimes it's like, ah, well, th there's something more to them than just being monsters. And it's like, well, which one are you trying to play with, right? Um, especially because the whole point of this is that they made these monsters because even though the Nazis are horrible people, they still have the same basic human fears that humans do, or like that all humans do. And so being uh, like encountering these like universal monster beings should put them on the back foot and hopefully give them an edge, right? Um, and the whole time uh, our characters are learning that they are not accepted by society, that there is no way for them to fit in, even though they are just people too. And so it's weird because on one hand you dehumanize the Nazis and humanize these monsters, kind of being a hypocrite about how you're writing. And then on, on another hand, it's like you should not humanize Nazis, but by virtue of the style of storytelling that you're doing, you naturally pose the question, should these people be humanized, right? And it's, it's, it's a really, it basically feels like J.M. DeMatteis and, and, and co. Uh, wrote themselves into a corner uh, thematically, and then they were like, fuck, how do we do it? Uh, just ignore it. And uh, they just continuously decide to not dabble into the gray area there. And I don't necessarily think that they need to. It's just like very blatantly like <laughs> uh, skipped over that it just kind of gets ridiculous, right? Like, I, I don't know, it's, it's a bit odd. But that's not really important. That's kind of a lot of subtext within the stories. Most of the stories are pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, war stories, you know, one time they have an escort mission, another time they have to infiltrate a place, another time they have to go into a, uh, a, a camp in order to save someone from within it, another time they're fighting against some planes, another time they're on an island, you know, you know, they're all over the place, they go to e Egypt to fight the, uh, the African Corps, they, they go to islands in, in, South, in the Pacific in order to fight against Japan, they, they do all of these things, right? And uh, I, I just want to mention a few kind of key ones that I thought were interesting, right? So the first one that was really cool is when the creature commandos go to Dinosaur Island. 
I thought that was really fun. I thought that was really enjoyable. I really like the idea of Jurassic Park, but the universal monsters of the characters that are in Jurassic Park, I think that's really fun. I thought that was really great. Uh, it was ridiculous, but it, it was enjoyable. Um, then there's another situation where characters get into a situation where Lucky gets hurt. He gets taken to a hospital, he gets stitched back together, and he's given vocal cords. The thing is that the next story, they immediately forget that they gave him vocal cords. And so for the rest of the time, he speaks uh, kind of like, like in grunts and growls, um, even though the story said that they gave him vocal cords. I think they said rudimentary vocal cords, but that means that they should at least be able to make some like words, but he never does actually say words. And I, I thought that was, a, this was notable because it was so glaringly, uh, you know, there that there was an issue and no one decided to fix it. They just kind of ignored it and kept going. And I guess that's just kind of how it goes uh, at that time. Uh, there's another story later where Lieutenant Shreve gets hurt. He gets uh, reconstructive surgery done on his face. He looked exactly like uh, he did before. So the surgery was a success, um, but there was a female doctor in, in this area. Something happened. There was a chemical explosion. And what happened was that her, 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 her hair got turned into snakes. I'm not really sure how a chemical explosion gives you snake hair, but she becomes a Medusa. She realizes that there is no place for her in the, in the human world. And so she joins the creature commandos. And now we have an, another character added to the team. And she brings a lot of uh, value to the team because uh, she's a balancing force because she's a woman. Uh, she has a different um, kind of vibe and style to the male characters because they're all soldiers. Um, and I actually really like her a lot because I think that she is a very cool, strong character that doesn't lose out on the fact that she's a woman, right? A lot of her personal ploys uh, or, or personal issues that she has to deal with are about the fact that she wants to be loved, she wants to have children, but because of who she is and uh, how she looks, that might never be possible, right? Uh, without knowing that she actually has love uh, in the form of Lucky, um, but she just doesn't understand that that's what he's trying to tell her, right? And uh, overall, I, I like this character a lot, and I think the introduction of her and the addition of her into the team was pretty awesome. Uh, the next time that uh, we get a really cool story here is when we get introduced to GI Robot. I really like this character. Um, so there's two of them. There's Jake One, who is the introduction to the GI Robot. He um, has a partner who's a human called Cocker, and Cocker gets hurt. He gets shipped back to uh, the US, and uh, GI Robot jumps into the ocean and follows him. Somehow he gets lost. Uh, near Dinosaur Island, and so when the Creature Commandos show up, they end up going to, to Dinosaur Island with him, and then they get captured by <laughs> an offshoot of Atlanteans, uh, who are all actually robots. They think that GI Robot is going to side with him because he's also a robot, but it turns out that GI Robot has uh, found the value in humanity through Cocker, and so he sacrifices himself to uh, defeat these uh, robotic Atlanteans, and to make sure that the Creature Commandos are back on uh, the surface world. And I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was great. I love creature. Com uh, I, I love the creature commandos. I think they're cool, but I really love GI robot. I think that his stories are, are really wonderful because it is about the inherent humanity within all living creatures, right? Or whatever you want to kind of word that like. Um, and he does it a, a lot better because he's not actually human. Whereas all of the creature commandos were human at one point, even if they turned into monsters, right? And so uh, the the message hits har harder with him than it does with them, right? If that makes sense. Um, then there's another situation where they go to Egypt and somehow Medusa or Dr. Myrna, I think is her name, connects with an ancient Gorgon that was uh, mummified in the uh, in the Egyptian tomb. And that was pretty cool. Uh, at one point they meet a, um, a goddess who is made of fire and she loves Lieutenant Shreve, but uh, Myrna manages to convince her not to uh, take him. Uh, and then later uh, we get introduced to Jake and Jake too, who uh, ends up in England with them and they save Princess Diana from <laughs> getting stolen by Nazis. Uh, and it seems like she's blind, so she can't see. And she uh, falls in love with Jake uh, too, even though, uh, you know, he's a robot. And um, overall, pretty good stuff. The story ends with them getting jettisoned into space accidentally, but maybe on purpose. And that's where they disappear to never to be seen again until they get retconned in the new 52 as like, you know, like actually Frankenstein, actually Dracula, actually the Wolfman. Um, and that's pretty cool. Um, 
But that's basically it for the story. I mean, there's a lot more stuff going on and I recommend that you read this. I think it's a pretty easy uh, issue or volume to get your hands on. Uh, on uh, when I bought it in, in, on Kindle, it was like $2, $2.99. Uh, it's probably not gonna be that anytime soon again, right? Because uh, the prices of, of digital books change all the time. Uh, but this physical collection should only be about 20 bucks. So you should be able to get it and get your hands on it. And maybe there will be a deluxe edition of this at some point with uh, the TV show coming out. I'm not really sure. Um, but overall, the story was good. I, I, I quite enjoyed it. In terms of characters here, we get Lieutenant Matthew Shreve, who is just an asshole human. We get Lucky Taylor, who's a Frankenstein kind of character. He's kind of like the thing in the sense that he is... Um, he's a big, brutish man with super strength. But, you know, in the... On the inside, he's just a soft man that just wants love and, and care, right? Uh, then we have Vincent Velcro, who is Dracula. He's just kind of like the cool guy of the team. Uh, he's a bit uh, dickish, but uh, not so much compared to Matthew Shreve. And then we have Warren uh, Griffith, who is the farm boy werewolf. And yes, he's pretty fun, but his powers are stupid because like he can't control when he becomes a, a werewolf, nor is it tied to the moon. So he's just like kind of at the whim of his body which I guess adds value, but ultimately it's just used to make the team weaker or stronger depending on the situation and, and, and the type of tension that they want to build. And the problem isn't necessarily that kind of uh, storytelling method, it's that it's just so like blatantly obvious, right? Um, so yeah, and then we have uh, Mira Rhodes or Mirna Rhodes, who is a Gorgon lady. I think she's supposed to be like European in some way, but uh, she comes off American like all the other characters. Uh, and she's a Gorgon, right? She's a Medusa. She has a snakes for hair. And then we have GI Robot 1 and 2. They're both called Jake uh, because that stands for something. I think it's jungle, artificial, something, uh, killing machine, uh, exper experimental, something like that. Um, I, I'm not really sure, but uh, both of these characters are pretty cool. Uh, they both look kind of like C-3PO or kind of like just the, the mask portion of uh, Darth Vader. And they're really kind of creepy looking, but also pretty fun. So I like them a lot. In terms of world building, there really isn't too much going on. I mean, we know that's World War II. We know that the US Army uh, had some special scientists creating these monsters to fight Nazis due to the inherent fear that all humans uh, have at these kind of creatures, these specific human-like things that are not human. And robots are cool, so that's really all there is to it. In terms of artwork, um, it's not really consistent, but it's broadly speaking pretty good. And I can't necessarily say that that's bad. I, I, I broadly speaking, enjoyed all of it. I think that the coloring and the uh, inking was all pretty standard as well. Uh, there was a pretty good style that was kept across it, uh, even though sometimes it did deviate a little bit. But not so much that it was uh, like noticeable, or when it was noticeable, the story was pretty short, so it didn't really matter too much. Um, there was no fan service though. There was no, you know, pretty women in uh, less clothing or anything like that. I mean, there was a lot of pretty female characters uh, just because that's the style that they used to draw them in. Um, but there wasn't anything particularly, you know, uh, sexy about anything that the characters did. So there was no fan service in that sense. Ratings wise is a 4.5 out of 5, like I said. Broadly speaking, it is great. Uh, but there's, you know, some inconsistencies in the writing in terms of the characters, uh, you know, what abil abilities they have and when. Uh, there were some inconsistencies about the theming. Uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you want to, you want us to sympathize with creatures or things that act like monsters, but could very well actually be human on the inside. And so you pit the, the, the creature commandos who are physical monsters against uh, Nazis who are like emotionally monsters, if you want to call it that, and then only humanize one side or humanize both sides, but in a really weird way. And, and so that's not really, that doesn't work for me, right? Because on one hand, thematically that makes sense, that's understandable, right? It's kind of like what Schindler's List kind of did. Um, but also, if you want to have a, like bad guys that are bad guys, you should completely always make them bad. And, or, or at least in the case of like stories like this, where you just need like a generic villain for our characters to fight against, right? And by using Nazis, and then by trying to explore some of the issues that they have, you're not really doing that well. Especially because the thematic elements of the story are monsters are also people, right? So <laughs> it doesn't really work for me. Um, and then ultimately, just uh, some of the stories are not that good compared to other ones. Um, this has a really old style, of course, because it's old. Um, and so that style is not really necessarily for everyone. It's not necessarily my favorite style of storytelling either, but... Um, I enjoyed myself a lot reading this and I had a lot of fun with the concept. 
I think the idea of Frankenstein fighting Nazis is awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, these characters are not characters that I particularly care about. You know, I'm not super interested in the Universal Monsters anyways. Um, I just uh, I just thought this would be a fun read uh, for the theme of the month, right? Which is Halloween. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts on this. Uh, sorry if I rambled or wasn't really clear about some of the stuff that I was saying. I'm kind of tr having to rush through this video uh, because I have other stuff to do today and I need to f get this out before the end of the month. So hopefully it's not too annoying to, to watch, but uh, thank you guys very much for, for doing so. If you did, and uh, see you guys next time.